five life, we have to break everything that we do in steps. If you have a big project, a big system, or something that is too huge to handle, the first recommendation is to break it in steps. Life is about sequence. Programming is about sequence. So you are going to create a new system, you're going to create a new procedure, you have to establish what are the steps in the sequence. Then we come to discussions related to making decisions. You have to make a decision. The point is, you go left or you go right. You buy this or you buy that. You move to one city or to another. You get this job or the other. So when you are in the fork of life, you have to make a decision. But remember, you are the owner of those decisions, but a slave of the consequences. Once that you take a decision, you have to go that road. If that road is wrong, then you have to make another decision and go back. Or if the course direction is right, then you're going to make other decisions as you move. So decisions is the second method that you're going to use to create your system. You're going to create a procedure, a step, and you're going to send me in one direction or in another direction. The third method that we have to observe here is the loop. Repetition, repetition, repetitions is the secret to be a master. When you know something, you're going to do it again. If something is wrong and you did it not in a very good way, you have to repeat it to be sure that you improve it. If you don't know how to do a skill, the more you practice, the more you get the skill. So repetition, or also called a loop, is part of our decision-making process. You have to decide when to return and do it again. As you see here on my board, I have the three of them in a sequence of events that are going to start, for example, when you arrive to campus. You come to this campus and then you realize, well, it's raining or it's not raining. So you have the decision to make. It is not raining, it's shiny sun outside. Well, you decide to wear sunglasses. But what happens if it is raining? Then you decide, well, I will not wear my glasses, I will wear a rain jacket. So you make a decision and you go one direction or the other. Or you wear the glasses or you wear the rain jacket. Then you continue with your sequence and then you go to your class. When the class is over, you have another decision. Do I have another class or is done for the day? Then you decide one or the other. In the case that you have another class, then you're going to do a loop. In this case, you return to step number six and go to class. Different room, different building, different professor, but similar procedure. At the end of that class, that is a sequence, then you ask yourself another decision. It's time to go home or it's time to go to another class? You have three classes. Well, you go to class, then you loop again, and you go to six. If you don't have more else to do, then you go home. But what happens if it's raining or it's sunny outside? Well, you can add more steps to your sequence of events and maybe go back again and ask you the same question. It is raining, well, you wear a jacket. It is not raining, you wear the sunglasses. And this is a basic example of the sequence of events that you normally do when you have a logic to follow to create a system or create a procedure and you want to be sure that you are including all the options. Now we're going to use the magic eraser to show you the graphic. We're going to show you the same sequence of events using a process map or a flow chart. They have different names, you can do it vertically, you can do it horizontally, but the bottom line is that it's up to you. You're going to draw the boxes of the same sequence that we have in the previous example 
and then you're gonna see how all the pieces are gonna be together in a graphical mode. You going back to the example, you see here we arrive to campus and then we have a box that specify the action on what's gonna happen and then you have the arrow that show you the sequence of events. In this case you arrive to camp, then you park your car and then you have a decision symbol. The decision symbol is normally represented using a diamond. In this case, you are going to ask you a question. It is raining, yes or no? It is raining, is yes, then you jump to the step that requires you to wear a jacket. And then you go back, you go to your class. In the case that it is not raining, then you don't follow this road, you follow the no road. And the no road shows you that you have to wear your sunglasses. You wear your sunglasses from the parking lot to your class and then go back to blacks. You have then a decision making and a sequence here. You say one road is a sequence, you take another road, it's a different sequence. What happened at the end of the class? Well, then you ask yourself a different question. At the end of your class, you ask yourself another decision. Do we have more classes? Yes or no? If you have a, another class, then you look back to the previous step and you go to class. Different room, different building, different professor, but it's the same procedure. Then, at the end of the class, you ask the same question that you did before. Do I have more classes? Yes or no? It is yes, then you loop again. It is no, then you follow a different path until you go home. As you see here, the two kind of representations are very simple, very easy to do. And you can practice all this. We're going to start practicing in our classes doing different kind of sequences and decision making points. For example, when you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing that you do? Normally, stop the alarm clock and wait for another nine minutes. And then you loop again until you hear the sound and you do it again for three times. So this loop sequence is very similar to the exercise that we normally do in classes. So think about, make the connection between the sequence of events that you do at home and the sequence of events that you have to do in the exercise. After you finish your sequence with a nice breakfast, then you can put together your sequence of events that you do at home when the sequence of events that you do when you arrive to college. When you're done with college and you don't go home, you can add another decision here. Well, after classes, I have to work. Then you go to work. When you go to work, you can use your car. Inside your car, you're gonna see that you have different decisions to make. It's time to break, it's time to turn left, it's time to turn right. And when you're doing all these sequence of events, decision points, etc., if you think in a system, you are adding an input so in some places the system is working for you in the case of your car, is driving you, the engine, the electrical system, the air conditioning system, the brake system, and then at the end, when you brake, you are adding another input, and you're getting another output, you are getting another feedback, and all these sequence of events, decisions, and loops are creating a system that is called a car, that take you from one place to another. Think about the examples, think about the analogies, think about your exercise, and be sure that you're gonna create your own sequence of events, decisional loops, and you're gonna join the you're gonna enjoy the exercise. Have fun, enjoy the exercise, ask questions to each other, and let's see the results.